All right, on this episode of Working Capital, the real estate podcast, I have Justin Kivel on the show. Justin is the founder of Break Into CRE. For those of you that don't know, that's commercial real estate. They're a leading source of financial modeling and career training for people trying to break into the industry. Awesome podcast. He also has a YouTube channel by the same name, Break Into CRE, which has over 18,000 subscribers, which is pretty impressive for the commercial real estate industry. Anyways, stay tuned. Hope you like the show. Justin, how's it going? It's going great, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. Awesome. Well, like I said, I'm super excited to have you on. I've kind of followed you online for a number of years now. And I think uh, just kind of joking around before the show, uh, we were talking how, you know, commercial real estate can come sometimes be a little behind when it comes to social media. So what I'd like uh, for you to tell listeners is, first of all, you know, who you are, your, uh, your background in, in real estate and how you came to, uh, to do what you're doing today. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so I, I started out in real estate, uh, probably similar to a lot of people in that uh, I, I knew of people, for me, it was specifically a family member um, who had invested in real estate, and they had a pretty great life, uh, I thought, kind of as a result of that. So I, I decided to go down the real estate path, because I was looking at, okay, I, I really like math, I really like kind of tangible buildings, traveling to new cities, uh, this seems like it could be a really good fit for me. So uh, I had the opportunity to join a family business. Uh, my great grandfather was a developer in Tucson, Arizona. So he built up uh, shopping malls and regional shop uh, and bought up a bunch of apartment complexes and mobile home parks uh, and just some kind of piecemeal properties that built a portfolio over time. Uh, but he died in 1995. So for about 20 years, it was hanging out, not doing much. Uh, so after I graduated college, there was an opportunity to go there. And uh, I worked in basically an asset management capacity. So we weren't really buying much. We were just managing deals. And at that time, I was 2011, 2012 to 2014. Uh, as I was working there, I was thinking I was getting a little bit too tunnel visioned, if that makes sense. I was in mm. a relatively small city and uh, I was a young guy, wanted to move to Southern California. Um, and so basically what I did was I decided to go to business school to see kind of how the institutional players do it and to be around some really sharp real estate investors uh, so that's what I did. So I went to UC Irvine for my MBA. Uh, I had the opportunity to intern at three different shops. So I worked at uh, MIG Real Estate to uh, work at a company called HFF, which is now a part of JLL. Uh, mm. And so I was working in retail and office sales there. Uh, and I was to end up working for them in San Diego. Uh, long story short, I met my wife at business school. She had a job lined up in San Diego. So we were headed down to San Diego from Orange County. And uh, basically what happened was that was packaging up a deal for a client. And they said, hey, we need a senior associate. It was a great entrepreneurial type opportunity. Uh, so I went and worked for them after business school down in San Diego. It was awesome. Uh, really, really great training ground to basically be a hands-on entrepreneur in a sense with a salary. Um, so I was doing everything there, asset management, acquisitions, some investor relations. I mean, it was, it was an excellent opportunity. I loved it. I was just really focused on getting to the multifamily side. Uh, and then I went to Fairfield Residential, which at that time was a subsidiary of Brookfield and uh, worked in multifamily acquisitions there. Had a great time. Uh, really, really enjoyed the people that I worked with and just me overall. Um, and essentially, I had a consulting opportunity come up and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a shot at this and see what happens. And uh, during that time, trying to figure it out, I thought, well, there's, there's an opportunity here for maybe an educational platform. I've, I've been on the receiving end of, help, of being helped trying to figure out how to make it in this industry. And I feel like I didn't have a great resource for me when I was trying to go through this. So uh, I kind of started to try and create one and started with a few videos and, and kind of grew from there. 
my interest. And, and yeah, it's kind of a long winded way of saying where I am today. But yeah, that's my background. It's been a lot of different things in the real estate industry, which I think has been excellent because I've been able to see different parts of the business and meet a lot of really smart people who are much smarter than me and see how they look at and analyze deals uh, and to also be in very different situations with different companies as well uh, to see the inner workings of that, how the kind of hiring process goes uh, and basically how to be successful in those types of roles. So uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. The, the breakdown. Yeah, that's really cool. You know what? You're not the first person I, I've heard uh, say that, you know, they've gone to do an acquisitions job and that was kind of a breeding ground for them to be entrepreneurial in the future. And it, it kind of makes sense. I mean, any of the uh, colleagues I work with that are in the acquisition teams, it's really as close as you can get to being the investor, but working within a shop, right? You're looking at deals, you're underwriting them. So how did that play into kind of what you've created today online? And in terms of the education that you have with kind of the acquisition hat on, you know, how did that influence what you're, what you're currently doing today? Um, so, so when I was first starting to think about creating content, I knew going through the educational process and trying to find things outside of just being on the job and also outside of traditional academia, a lot of the, the content out there, if there wasn't much out there, but the stuff that was out there felt very high level and kind of like a paper real estate investor, if you will. So mm -hmm. what I wanted to do was create a resource that applied kind of hands-on real life experience of doing deals and then mesh that with the institutional best practices of this is how you create an Excel model. And this is what the expectation is when you're working with either institutional investors, or if you are actually just an employee and you're an analyst or an associate, what are you going to have to do if you work for a big company like a Brookfield or Goldman Sachs? What does that look like? And what are the expectations? Because for me, it, it really felt like a black box when I was first trying to get into this industry, right? It felt like it was very intimidating. I mean, a lot of guys are great in the industry and they're willing to talk to you, but there are some places that you're going where you'll step into an office and it kind of feels like an ivory tower, right? You're just, yeah. you're really, and, and there, there can be some status things going on where people are, are protective of their space. And, uh, it, it can be intimidating when you first start out. And so what I really wanted to do was be that guy that I had when I was starting out that guys that were five years to me did for me on a small scale. And I wanted to do that on a larger scale. So, um, that's kind of how my platform evolved and still how I operate my business in the sense of, I, I want to be that, that support for people and make this process less intimidating and not any more complicated than it has to be because it's, it can be overwhelming to start with and there's no need to make it even more overwhelming or complex. So I guess the question is, what do you do in terms of trying to help people break into CRE that say have, have no experience in the commercial real estate world that, you know, are just in university right now, maybe a couple of years uh, in and, and they're starting to look at their prospects post, uh, post university. Yeah. So, so number one is I, I try to equip them with a, a technical skill set that, that really matters in, in commercial real estate, because you can go out and you can learn Excel and it's great if you know Excel and Excel is a, an important piece of it, but you need to be able to put it together with real estate finance knowledge. And there are specific things in commercial real estate underwriting and analysis that you're going to be expected to do on, on day one of a job. So what I like to do first is with someone who's coming in totally raw and has no experience and maybe is in school right now, that's a great opportunity to merge what you're doing right now in school with learning the technical aspects of underwriting and modeling, because that's really how you're going to add value from day one. I mean, you and I both started in the industry at some point. We got our start in the beginning when we first started in our first job. You you don't have context, you've not, you haven't done a deal before, you don't understand the whole entire process. But something that you can do to add value, no matter how inexperienced you are, is if you understand Excel, 
and you can modify a, a model or create a model from scratch. There's a lot of older guys in the industry who are out doing deals who either don't want to do this anymore and they've, they've spent their time and they're, they're done and they're on to the next thing. Uh, they don't have the time to do it. Or there's, there's a lot of really seasoned guys in the industry who don't actually don't know how to do it. And so if, if you can come in with a really strong Excel skill set where you're able to do things like model out 10 years of cash flows or build an equity waterfall model or do some of these things that you're seeing on job descriptions, uh, you're, you're going to be able to add a lot of value from day one. And that's, that's one of the biggest wins for people looking to break into the industry without experience because you can come in and you already have the, a large portion of the training you need to get started. And the company that you work with is going to have a way of underwriting deals, right? They're going to, they're going to look at certain deals in this state and this state in a certain way, or they're going to look at certain deals with this kind of risk profile in a certain way. And you can learn all of those things and you will learn those things on the job. But what, what companies don't want right now is, especially right now when hiring is so tight, is they don't, they don't want someone that's a liability on the Excel side, right? They don't want somebody that doesn't understand the real estate cash flow statement and also doesn't understand the basic calculations, right? Cap rate, IRR, uh, equity multiple, cash on cash. They want all of those things taken care of because those are things that they're you can learn on your own and you don't need to be on the job to learn it. And then everything else is just reps and, and training over time. Um, so what I really try to do is give people that technical framework and knowledge and then apply that at the same time to what they're going to actually be doing on the job. Um, and whether that's at a mega huge corporation or a smaller entrepreneurial firm, uh, I try to blend my experience in both to make it applicable to both scenarios because two companies in commercial real estate can be completely different than one another and can operate completely differently. So uh, I feel like that's why I said in the beginning of this, I, I'm really grateful that I've had so many different experiences in the industry because I've been able to see how different companies do things uh, and it, it can be extremely different. So uh, my students and members of my program really come from all facets and are looking to go into all different facets of commercial real estate. Um, but that technical component and skill set is something that you can really tackle before you get into the industry. And that's going to set you apart from, from so many people when, especially in a competitive job environment, like we're seeing today. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of times with, with brokerages or, or real estate investment companies in general, they'll use, you know, an accounting degree or economics degree or finance degree as a proxy for exactly what you're talking about that, that, you know, there at least is going to be an understanding of how to do a discounted cash flow, or they're going to know some of the certain things. One, one thing I, I also tell younger uh, people that are trying to break in, and I've seen it in your videos is understanding the, the terminology of our industry. You know, it's, it's one thing that will set you apart from uh, other people, even, you know, right out of school or even after that, where you can, like you said, not only understand uh, being able to have that technical aspect, but understanding a little bit more deeply, you know, what net, you know, what net rent means, what are, what are additional rent, you know, what are expense reimbursements, stuff that we say all the time. And I, I hate jargon in any industry, but you know, our industry, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's jargon. I mean, it, they're terms for a reason, right? Because there is nuance in them. And so if you had somebody, you know, you have somebody that comes to you that let's say wants to get onto the development side rather than say brokerage and, you know, they're, they're getting their Excel skills, they're getting them, you know, where they need to be now from an actual, you know, whether you're going to a Heinz or a Brookfield and you want to break into some of these larger companies, where, where are you telling them to go and, and what are you telling them to do? aside from what we just talked about, you know, preparing yourself in terms of actually reaching out to these companies and, and landing a role. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of my content on, on YouTube is very focused on this. And then I have uh, quite a bit of content within my programs and courses on this as well. But I mean, just like everyone says in, in real estate, uh, your network is extremely important. And especially when you're talking about somebody who is in college, either undergraduate or a graduate program, you, you really have more free reign than ever 
to reach out to people, especially alumni, and say, hey, I'm looking to break into this industry. I would love to just hear about what you do. And, and there are a lot of people out there, and most people will enjoy talking about themselves. Uh, most people will, will really uh, remember that time. I remember that time very well. I, I look yep. back at some of my LinkedIn messages and my emails, and I cringe. Oh, you're because- like, oh, God. <laughs> I, yeah, I was just so aggressive with this. I, I, I would just fire off these emails. My goal when I went in, when I got uh, into my MBA program was I, I wanted to sit down with at least two new people a week. Uh, and sit down could mean having coffee uh, or sit down could mean getting on the phone. But I wanted to really get different perspectives to see where I fit best in the industry. So um, it's kind of a two-pronged approach. And this is, this is why I interned at so many different places because I wanted to see uh, where where I fit in best. But mm. for people who are looking to break in, aside from the technical component, I would say, number one, try and use whatever your current situation is. So whether you're in university, uh, grad school, or you're, you're a career switcher, and maybe you're in a different part of finance, and you have a buddy who's working in real estate right now, use, use that to have that as an in to start building a network and really understand what different parts of the business do and if that would be the right fit for you uh, personally based on your personality type because there are a lot of different things that you can do in real estate and maybe you don't have the uh, kind of outgoing nature to be an investment sales broker, but maybe you are really analytical and you wanna be on the underwriting and portfolio analysis side at a major company. And there's huge career upside in both of those things. And the most career upside from what I've found personally and from people who have been successful in my programs are the people who kind of follow what they, what they really want to do and who, who they are, right? Like you, you're not going to be in, in most cases that I've seen, you're not going to be successful if you're, you're really trying to fit, fit a square peg into a round hole. So if you know that you're a super outgoing guy and you love building relationships and you love networking, then, then investment sales could be great for you or any sort of brokerage could be great for you. Um, but if it's not, then you're probably going to struggle. And so, uh, just being aware of where you fit in the industry and, uh, trying to build your network and using your situation to your advantage is, are two things that are, again, massive pieces of the puzzle aside from just learning the technical components. Yeah, I think there's this, um, there's this push uh, or has been this push in the past from education um, or from an educational point of view to, you know, shore up the areas that you're not as strong in. And I always thought the opposite. It's like, find out what you are strong and kill that. Um, yeah. And like, even myself, totally. like on the investing and uh, brokerage side, have no problem speaking with people, no problem, you know, going out and networking where I have colleagues, like they're, they're terrified of that. And then on yeah. the flip side, I don't mind underwriting deals, but I, you know, getting into the, the minutia of certain, you know, waterfall models or building them, yeah. I would rather just not do that at all. And there's no sense you taking all of that opportunity cost and basically trying to get yourself up to average when you already excel in another area. Would, would you agree with that? I totally agree with that. And I, I have, I, I get this question so much where people will see my content and they know that it's pretty analytical training yeah. and they'll say, well, I, I want to be a, an acquisitions director or head, or head of acquisitions at XYZ company. And I, but I, I really see myself as a leader and I, I don't see myself sitting behind a computer screen and I, I just can't see that being me. And what I, my response to that is, is generally like, if you are an acquisitions director, even at the highest levels, you're going to be reviewing models. Like you're mm -hmm. going to, you're going to have some sort of deal structure that's going to come in that you're probably not going to trust someone with one to two, two years of experience to build out for you. So you're going to need to step in and do that. And at every level in between, you need to be able to review models, see how different assumptions are going to tweak your models. Um, and so it, it's, it's a, it's tough. You don't, you need to, my recommendation is generally to make sure that your end goal is aligned with what you like to do and that the process is enjoyable. Because like I said, there are so many different 
avenues you can take in this business and they're all so different. And so if you like real estate and you want to learn more about real estate, most people get into this industry and in my experience and what I hear from just member and student feedback is people want to get into this industry a lot of the times for in the kind of high finance commercial real estate component because they ultimately want to own their own real estate or they want to own their own deals. Like yeah. many people who get into this industry are entrepreneurial. They don't plan to work for someone forever. And so really understanding like, Hey, where am I strong? Because even if you want to do your own deals, you can always hire someone or partner with someone who's better than at that than you are. And I've seen that so many times with people. I think you, you're probably a good example of that. Somebody who partners with someone who's maybe stronger in another area and you do what you do best. Uh, I remember I was, I was looking at an asset management role um, maybe in 2016 or something or some at some period where I was looking to get back into multifamily and wanted to focus on multifamily. And I had one of my mentors and one of the guys that uh, I invest with today as a limited partner and um, has really been helpful in my career. I was, I asked him, should I go into asset management? And he was like, well, do you want to be an asset manager? And I said, well, no, not really, but I think it'd be a really good thing for me to really see at a high level at an institutional, from an institutional perspective, how, this is done and be the guy how the, how and, the pros do it so to speak yeah yeah exactly and i i had done it on on smaller scales and on for retail and office at at higher levels but not specifically for multifamily and what he said to me is he said well if if you end up going out and doing your own deals you can hire that you can hire someone who can do that for you and since that time i've always had that in the back of my head uh he actually ended up going out on his own and doing just that. Uh, and also I've, I've seen that time and time again, where uh, maybe you have a, a guy that's really has a great network uh, and can find deals. And then you have somebody else who can line up the, the capital and financing and all of that. And they don't have someone that maybe is too operational and they can just hire that. Uh, whereas I've also seen people who have been very successful coming from the operation side, but maybe they don't have access to capital or maybe they, they don't really have a great acquisitions track record, but they know how to actually execute on a business plan. Uh, and staying with your asset management or acquisitions or whatever you like to do and getting really, really, really good at that one thing is going to help you make a lot of money and also enjoy what you're doing a lot more. So just to tie it all back together, I would say for people who are looking to break into the industry that uh, want to be in real estate, but maybe they don't want to have just a, a brain full of Excel every day or, or they can't get on the phone. Like you said, yeah. uh, there's still probably a place for you. You just need to be aware of that and go with that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the one beautiful thing about real estate. It's like you are as an investor, at least you're building a team, right? And every component yeah. of that team is usually a different, uh, person with a, a different disposition than the other, you know, the asset manager, the property manager, the limited partner, the, uh, the investor, you know, the guy that's uh, underwriting and analyzing deals. So yeah. there's all these, there's all these different areas that I think will be a skill set that you can have, but, and, and to partnering, you're absolutely right. And we talk about it on the show a lot, you know, don't find a partner, um, that, you're both bringing the exact same thing to the yeah. table. If you're both bringing yeah. in capital and you're both great underwriters, you know, maybe partner with them, but add a, add a third member to that team that actually complements, uh, you know, complements you so that you can actually go out and be well-rounded as a, as a company. So for, you know, I could be wrong, but it just seems from talking with you and just seeing your videos that by nature, you seem a little bit more analytical and it kind of flies in the face of putting yourself out there and being on YouTube. So when yeah. you decided to start doing videos and, and going on social media and stuff like that, first of all, am I right? And, and number two, you know, what was that process like? It was, it was it difficult for you to kind of put your face out there? Cause I know it's, you know, even for myself, it's like, yeah. I'm pretty outgoing guy, but you know, you're watching videos of yourself and it's sometimes it's pretty cringy. Oh man, you're, you're spot on. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't love it. I don't love the, the spotlight. I mean, I, I have a very small channel in comparison to other YouTubers out there that really do this for a living. Uh, but again, it was like, I felt like 
this information needed to be out there and you start to get, I mean, you, you have a, a very public platform as well. And so I'm sure you start to see these, these messages come in from people saying this really helped me do X, Y, Z. And it's, only, it's the only thing that keeps me going, man. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, 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 it, it is honestly really cool. Like yeah. it sounds like a bunch of BS sometimes, but it, it really matters and the stuff you're doing really matters. So yeah, I, I, I'm not a great YouTuber, right? Like I do the same thing in every single video, every single time. It's the same background. I don't, I don't, I'm not great with B-roll or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, you're right. I'm very analytical. I, I love my courses because mm. so many of those courses are very Excel based. And so I'm just walking through this with people. Um, and it's not all about me. It's about what are you building? Right. Yeah. And uh, so on YouTube, it, it was very difficult to get started. Uh, and it's still difficult to this day, but I feel like that basic content around just how to break into the industry and, and general analysis concepts, that was something that when I was first getting started, I would have killed for. I was, mm. just, there, it didn't feel like there was anything in the middle, right? So you, you, have, you have like the very high level, just very, very academic information. And yep. that's, that's great. And you, you should know all of that. And then you have the other side of the spectrum that is like, financial freedom with multifamily, like yeah, all, yeah. all of those, if you know what I'm saying, like, 100%. like those things can, those things can be great, but I didn't, I felt like, well, I kind of, I kind of want to like learn this at a high level, but I also want to be able to apply it. And I want, I want someone to talk to me. Like if, if, if I'm in an office with a guy that's three years ahead of me, mm -hmm. he can sit down with me and say, Hey dude, like this is, this is how you do this. This is what you do. This is why you do it. And you're, you're going to be okay. You know? Yep. Uh, Cause yeah, you're right. I'm a super analytical guy. Like when I first started out and I didn't know anything, those days in the office were really nerve wracking. I mean, just, I, For you sure. always worry you're going to get an assignment that you don't know how to do. Um, and so being able to be in someone's corner is, is a really cool thing. And it's kind of like a pay it forward thing. I talked about a mentor that I had and I, I have so many guys who have been successful in the past who have taken so much time with me when I was first getting started, really trying to help me learn the ropes and listening to all my stupid questions and really helping me find my way. And without those people, I, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. And so when, when I talk to people and when I create content and when I create courses, it's around that, right? Like helping that guy that was me, that was so nervous and trying to, trying to figure everything out and piece everything together and failing a lot in that mm -hmm. process. Um, a lot of times with, with things, I talked about that entrepreneurial firm that I worked with. There were a lot of things that, that it was just me. I yep. mean, you usually have some sort of training wheels and it was just me. Yep. And if I messed up, I'm, I'm in trouble. And so I, what I want to do is create that kind of safe space resource where yeah. someone can come back to whether they have a job or they're looking for a job that maybe they run into something and they're like, Oh no, I, I don't know how to do this. They can come back to a course or my platform or uh, breaking the CRE Academy has a coaching feature. You can come back to me and say, Whoa, this was a, an experience that I wasn't expecting what are your thoughts or something like that? Um, so that's kind of how I try to, to run my platform as a whole. Yeah, that's great. And I mean, like the, the, we were talking about this before the show, like if, to me, you say it's a smaller channel, but like they're uh, on the real estate spectrum of channels on YouTube. Like you said, you have the ones that are very like, they remind me of like the 1990s infomercials. Like there's a, yeah, yeah. a red Ferrari and three blondes and you're like, yeah. get into real estate. Yeah, and then yeah. there's the side that you're actually, you're and not only are you in, in real estate on YouTube. So that kind of makes the pool even smaller. You're in commercial real estate, which makes the pool even smaller. And then you're really yeah. like on the side of people actually going in and being practitioners, not necessarily investors. So sure. um, I've, the, the fact that it's as large as, as it is, is, is incredible to me. But I think you're absolutely right too. Like the thing, you know, anytime that you're like, ah, what's the point of putting these videos out? Or, you know, maybe at the beginning when you're putting yourself out on social media and it goes for anybody listening that wants to get themselves out there, you get that one message from a from somebody, you know, in, in Idaho or something that's just like, Hey, this video is really impactful for me. And it really helped me in this way. And that definitely fuels 
um, kind of your, the creativity that you had, but the last few videos that, um, you know, I saw from you were, you know, very, very topical. They were talking about kind of looking for jobs within the downturn, um, talking about how you're underwriting deals today, uh, interest rates and where they are. So I think as long as they stay topical, they're always adding value. What I wanted to ask you though, in terms of the actual courses that you do, why don't you give listeners just kind of a background of how it's different from the stuff on YouTube and, and maybe what it allows you to do that perhaps YouTube doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Uh, you, you, sorry, you cut out one more time. I was just trying to follow, but. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, no. How much do you get there? We'll cut, we'll cut that out. Uh, you're, you're like tr trying to, uh, I guess, cater to, a, an audience that you narrowed down the audience oh, the very narrow, well. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. But then, yeah, I, you were in and out on, on okay. That. I'll just, I'll, I'll just redo it quickly. Yeah. Sorry. I was trying to let you go. No, 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 no problem. No problem. Yeah. So, I mean, we were talking about this a little bit before, uh, the podcast, but that, you know, your YouTube channel, you said was on the smaller end, but to me, the idea that <laughs> there's a YouTube channel that is in commercial real estate, uh, you know, that's a very specific area to begin with. So I think you've, you know, you've put out a bunch of great content, whether it's interest rates, whether it's underwriting deals. Uh, the question I had was more so about the courses that you do. So when you, you know, you see the content that you have on YouTube, how are the courses different and maybe how do they allow you to do things that perhaps you can't do on YouTube? Yeah. Great question. Uh, so YouTube is like you talked about, right? I mean, you have YouTube is a gigantic platform and if you're kind of catering to 18 to 30 year olds, uh, most of those people are also watching other videos on YouTube, right? So there's, there's a little bit of a high level overview that needs to be incorporated into most of these videos, even though they can get pretty granular. Uh, what I can't do on YouTube is walk through an entire model build out, right? So if you're trying to build a multifamily acquisition pro forma and you're starting from scratch, and this is something that you're trying to learn for uh, maybe a job that you have or, or preparing for a, an Excel interview exam, that's a great, great example where I have a course that's literally nine hours of just preparing for Excel interview questions that you might end up getting when you're interviewing for a small firm or a big firm. So I can't go as it, nearly as in depth uh, on the Excel modeling side. Um, and I also can't share resources. So there's all, I mean, every single course that I have has some sort of either an Excel training file, which I, I, I took some courses that were just Excel based when I was first starting out. Uh, and I found these basically these, these step-by-step -step Excel training files where you're doing something with the instructor and then you have a solution right there to check that with you. I felt, I found that very, very helpful. So uh, most of my courses really start with that base of here. These are the, this is the foundation and we're going to build these things together and build on this foundation throughout the entire course. And then maybe we'll have a more advanced section where we'll have at the end of the course, a, a full case study where you'll be building out a full model, or maybe you'll be doing a valuation of a sample deal. And then we have the more advanced courses, which are really focused on building an entire model from scratch, like something that you would be either working in, in kind of an institutional setting, or you would be expected to create or modify or whatever that looks like. Um, but yeah, on, on YouTube, it, YouTube is great for a lot of the career related stuff because that yeah. can be, those can be quick seven to 10 minute videos. Um, but for people who are really looking for the training, I mean, some people reach out to me and say, hey, I've, I've been watching your YouTube videos. They've been super helpful. And those are great for high level overviews and behavioral type things when you're, when you're trying to prepare for an interview. But if you really want the technical skill sets, that's something that I can't offer on, on YouTube. And that's really where the course content comes into play. And, and for people who are really looking to break into the industry and master real estate financial modeling and, and be that person that you step into a role and you're valuable from day one, or you step into an interview and, and the hiring manager goes, 
wow, this, this person this is exactly what we need. We got to get this guy. Yeah. That's, that's what you want. And, and that's really where the courses come into play where those, that's how I train people to end up being that person. You know, and it's, I, I think I've seen the same thing where I've put out, you know, YouTube videos where it's say it's going through a deal and you know, you get, you always get a message. Hey, can you send me that Excel file? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, exactly right. Like you can talk about interest rates. You can talk about the state of the economy, you know, in a five to 10 minute video. But once you start getting in the weeds, hundred percent, I can see how, you know, just another platform is a little bit easier. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot easier. And it's, and also there's, there's a dialogue too, right? Like there are comments on YouTube, but again, that's, that's not a constructive place to have a conversation. So, so for single standalone classes, my, anyone who joins my program or joins my individual, cor individual courses, they can ask questions on course content directly within that course player. So if they have a question as they're going through something, they can ask, they can ask that question. And my, my focus is making sure that, that they understand that question uh, and understand the answer very, very thoroughly. Um, again, like not this brief one sentence or one word answer, but I want to make sure that it's really clear uh, what, what they're doing, what they're trying, the answer to the question that they're asking. Um, so yeah. there's that. And then on my full break into CRE Academy platform, there's also a de dedicated uh, coaching communication. So people can actually reach out to me directly for career advice on their specific situation, even if it's outside of course content. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm, I'm in, I'm in this person's corner, right? If, if they're trying to prepare and they have specific questions for their specific situation, though, that's how I can help people uh, do that. So it's, it's really that next level of help and, and guidance to get people where they want to go. I guess that would also be helpful for listeners that are on the investment side that they're, you know, say that there, there are entrepreneurs are uh, entrepreneurs already in real estate and they're looking at an asset that they want a specific model for, or, or kind of understand how to underwrite it. Would that kind of be the avenue that they would go maybe on the coaching end? Yeah. So I, I tend to stay away from, from the actual deal analysis and I, I, I do consulting separately, which okay. is really doing that and, doing a lot of real estate financial modeling uh, and analysis on behalf of clients. And so that is kind of the separate thing. And, and the academy coaching is really focused on career coaching. Career but coaching. yeah, for people who do want more of a kind of deal analysis or underwriting or looking with help with building a model for their own deal, um, there's a consulting form on my site that that people can reach out to me uh, directly through that. I'm not taking on new clients at the moment. I've got mm -hmm. a handful of, of groups that I work with and that I really enjoy working with, um, but just trying to manage everything. <laughs> yeah, no, no, hundred percent. Okay. Well, listen, we, uh, we're almost out of time here. I usually do a few quick questions at the end here, a little bit of rapid fire style. So if you're ready, I'll, uh, I'll fire away. I'm ready, man. Okay. So for, it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be real estate, but you know, most people on the show do answer in the real estate space. Um, favorite book, uh, that's helped you in what you're doing in, in your space. Ooh, favorite book that's helped me with what I'm doing. I would, I, I'm going to give two, uh, and this is very consistent with my platform. Uh, number one is real estate finance and investments by Peter Lineman. I was so, going to say Lineman, that yeah, Lineman, so, I got to get him yeah. on the show. No, it's, it's real. It's a great textbook. And I, I refer people to that textbook because it talks to you in an academic way, yep. but it also talks to you in a way of, Hey man, this is what is what you need to know. Uh, and it's understandable and it's not, not too big, not too short. It's, it's wonderful. So that really helped me put everything into context. And I really focused on understanding everything in that book too, as I worked through it. Uh, another one that I don't hear talked about all that much is a book called confessions of a real estate entrepreneur by a guy named Jim Randall. Um, I think he's out on the East coast and I think he actually was an adjunct professor at NYU or one of those East coast universities. Yeah. And that, that book is all about his hands-on experience. And it's, it's a long time ago, but it has some great lessons about things like conversions into different uses and 
just how much money can be made in real estate if you do things correctly. And if you structure deals in the right way and structure your financing in the right way. Um, and it's really an in the trenches guide. I, I really, for people who want to do their own thing or maybe want to do their own thing one day, I really strongly recommend that book because that, that will really give you a hands-on look into this is, this is what it's like, and this is what the opportunity is. And this is also what the risks are. It's funny, like the, the Lindemann book is the subtitle is risks and opportunities. And it does go through it in more of like an academic way. Yeah. But this, this other book, this confessions of a real estate entrepreneur really goes through it. Like you'll mm -hmm. see the opportunity of these guys who did this deal and made this many millions of dollars in 45 days versus like the more uh, versus the risks, which are these guys lost a bunch of money doing this. So, yeah. um, I think yeah. both are really helpful. That's great. And I'll just add on the Lineman point. What's, what's great about his book, like many textbooks is his appendix, uh, is very in depth so that when he does, you know, one thing in chapter two, you know, that little, uh, you know, superscript, you can actually go into the appendix and be like, oh, okay, now I can kind of see how the model broke down or, or kind yeah. of a little bit more of a deeper dive. Okay. Um, so you mentioned a little bit earlier, but who are, is one or a few of the mentors that helped you out uh, at the beginning of your career? Yeah. So uh, a lot of guys that you, you wouldn't have heard of, but they are the presidents and CEOs of uh, some major real estate investment firms. Uh, most of them are in Orange County. I'm local in San Diego, but a few guys in San Diego, but it's really guys who have been there and done that and, mm. and have done a lot of the things uh, that, are, are necessary and have, have walked that path already and have already experienced success. Um, I, there, there's one in particular, in particular, um, he is, he's the CEO and starting to move into like more of a chair type role as he transitions and gets a little bit older. Um, but he, he understood my entrepreneurial spirit. He understood what I was trying to do. And he was very transparent with, this is what I've done. And this is what I suggest you do. Cause I've seen so many young guys come through the industry and I know this, this path I've seen before and this path I've seen before. And if you do X, Y, and Z thing, then the, you'll, you'll be very successful. And so um, for me, again, those conversations uh, still stick with me today. And I, I remember certain pieces of those conversations because I try to, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a young guy still and, and I have a certain amount of, industry experience, but nothing close to these guys that are 65, mm. 70 years old. Um, but I try to pass on some of those things that I learned in my programs for people who are looking for advice. Cause uh, like I said, I mean, I, I really sat down with two to two to four people a week uh, during business school and built some great relationships and many people that I still keep in touch with today. And uh, so, yeah, I would, I wouldn't be here without the people who have, who have really done that and then have turned around and said, Hey, I've made my money. I've done what I wanted to do. And now I'm ready to help the next yeah. generation. Yeah, it's great. And you kind of pass the torch or they pass it to you and you, you know, you kind of do the same thing for the younger generation. So speaking on that point, uh, the third one would be something that you know today about the industry that you wish you knew when you started out. Yeah. So <laughs> Sorry, what, I know it could be a long list that one. Yeah. So, so one of my, I keep talking about mentors, but I, man, I, I, I've looked through some of my LinkedIn and email messages and I, I cringe. I, I reached out to a lot of people. Um, yeah. But through that, there were a lot of great people who, who responded and we built a relationship over time. This was a guy that was a third party consultant uh, at a company that I worked at. And uh, it was actually, actually my family business before I went to business school and, and was trying to decide on what to do. Uh, and he was really experienced and kind of took me under his wing. And one thing that he would always say to me is that real estate isn't rocket science. And I think when you get into don't, the don't tell anybody that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and you can make it really complicated and yep. many firms need that when you get into the really institutional space and you're raising capital from a bunch of different equity investors and you really need to know the details down to the sense that's, that's really important. Um, but at the end of the day, it, it's easy to see commercial real estate as this really uh, huge, intimidating industry with a lot of really intimidating people when what it comes down to it is it's basic supply and demand and everyone uses real estate in everyday activities in everything that you do. So it's with many of these product types, it's, it's relatively easy to understand. And 
the, the supply and demand drivers are also relatively easy to understand. And if you put it in that context and within even the real estate financial modeling realm, what you're trying to do when you're building a model is project out what your cash flows are going to be. What do you think your cash flows are going to be? It doesn't really matter what formulas you use or like, it doesn't matter if if you if somebody's telling you you need to measure your IRR if all you care about is your annual dividend yield hmm. look at your cash on cash if yeah. you don't care about your IRR or you don't plan on selling the deal at any point take a look at that but if you if you look at it and say uh, instead of seeing this as this expansive overwhelming thing where there's so many complexities to it if you can say okay, real estate comes down to supply and demand. This is something that I use on an everyday basis. And what is my goal with investing in real estate or being in real estate in the first place? Like we talked about, many people want to get into the real estate industry because they want to do their own thing. Well, that should go into your kind of thought process with what kind of job you get, you're trying to get. Um, everything just falls into place much more easily and yeah. it feels a lot more attainable and tangible. Um, so yeah, real estate isn't rocket science. I, I wish I had internalized that more when I was first starting out. Um, but yeah, yeah, you can make it rocket science, but it doesn't need to be. Well, yeah, that's, that's the great point. It's like, you can make it as complex as you want it. And yeah. you, we could talk just like anything in finance. We can talk in a language that you could have nobody understand that's not in yeah. the industry if we really wanted to. And it, it doesn't help anybody. It makes you feel smart and that usually alienates people. Exactly. Uh, so my last question, uh, my favorite of the bunch, your first car make and model. Ooh, uh, 95 Dodge Intrepid. Man, that thing was, was oh, really yeah. rusted. Uh, <laughs> As a yeah. boat. That was, that was a boat. That's, That's exactly amazing. what it was. Yeah, everybody called it that. It was really, it was really a boat. I love that thing, though. <laughs> I, was, I was bumping music in that thing. I, I loved it. I kept it until... Until yeah. college. So. Well, those first car, cars, man, doesn't matter what it is. It, uh, it was a symbol of freedom. So that's oh. awesome. Uh, well, listen, where can people, we'll put, you know, links to all, all your content. Uh, so YouTube, as well as uh, any of the programs, but if there's any other area, where can people reach out to you? Yeah. So, so the break and see our YouTube channel, uh, is great for free content and the general overview of what I do. And also, uh, just general, commercial real estate career and analysis training in general. And then if you want to take a deeper dive and really build those analytical skill sets and modeling skill sets, or if you're preparing for an interview exam or really the application process and want somebody really more in your corner and that can answer your questions, uh, then uh, break into CRE.com is going to give you access to uh, all of the individual courses. If you're just looking for one or two classes uh, and that's all you're looking for, or uh, the full Break into CRE Academy program, which uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you, you've probably heard this already, uh, but you'll get access to all Break into CRE courses. Uh, every single real estate financial model that we have as far as templates is concerned, are concerned, and then also uh, Excel training files as well. So you can practice those and Excel interview exam training and, and all of that stuff. And then uh, you'll also get one-on-one -on -one coaching yes, for that uh, for career related questions as well. I guess today has been Justin Kimball. You've been listening to Working Capital, the real estate podcast. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Jesse. I appreciate it.